Well, the Green Party caucus on Parliament Hill is about to double to two MPs. The Greens won the federal by-election last night in the Vancouver Island riding of Nanaimo Ladysmith. That's the latest bit of electoral good news for the Greens, who are now the official opposition in Prince Edward Island. Green candidate Paul Manley, a researcher, filmmaker and communications specialist, was making his second run at the prize in Nanaimo. He won with almost 38 percent of the vote. The Conservatives uh, finished second with just under 25 percent. The New Democrats, who previously held the seat, slipped to just under 20, uh, to around 23 percent of the vote. And the Liberals captured just 11 percent, less than half of their showing in the 2015 polls. So how significant is this Green win on the island? Does it herald wider success this fall? Let's begin our conversation on that with two guests from Nanaimo. We're joined by the new Green MP, Paul Manley, MP-elect, and here in the studio by Green Party leader, Elizabeth Maids. Good to see you both. It's great to see Paul. It's the first time we've seen each other since the We're news. We're happy right? to bring you together. Thank you. Okay. Yes, thanks. Great. Listen, Mr. Manley, first of all, congratulations to you. Going from fourth to first is an impressive accomplishment. Why do you think the voters uh, took to your message this time? Well, last time I ran, we had the closest four-way race in Canada, and after the election, people told me that they really wanted to support me, but uh, they, they were worried about Stephen Harper getting elected again. And I think a lot of people got caught up in the sweep of uh, promise of electoral reform that 2015 would be the last first-past-the-post election. And so the, the Liberals picked up a lot of votes in 2015. This time around, it's a by-election, and... Uh, you know, once I started canvassing right after my nomination, uh, I was finding lots of support at the door. And, you know, once the writ was dropped, people just came to us in droves, um, you know, donating money, volunteering time, getting involved in the campaign, picking up uh, signs. And so I could just see that um, yeah, people were, were ready to, to uh, take, a, take a chance at voting green. Uh, doing what they wanted to really do, you know, voting for what they wanted and voting for a representative that they knew. And people know me in this community well. I've worked hard here for decades. I'm third generation here as well. And people really like the, the vision of the Green Party. Once people see our, our policy book, Vision Green, and, and go through it, they can tell that we are actually a very comprehensive um, party with ideas for how we're going to move forward into the next uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. All right, let, let me let me uh, let me move to the uh, the party leader, Elizabeth May. So now, when you when the caucus goes out to lunch, you'll be asking for a table for two now. Which yeah. Is, <laughs> yeah, which is we always... don't take lunch breaks. I hate to break it to Paul. <laughs> now so, we're so this not is, for nothing. We're the hardest working this MPs. Is, this is not an issue. How does having a, a second Green member of Parliament uh, here in Ottawa? change things for the party, do you think? Well, of course, it was a huge benefit to me when Bruce Heyer, who had been, who'd left the NDP and sat as an independent, joined me because it meant there was somebody to second my motions and my bills. But it is big that Paul Manley's the first um, uh, after me to be elected as a Green MP. It helps enormously in terms of our work and raising issues. But I think more fundamentally, the voters of Nanaimo Ladysmith have done something brave and they've sent a clear message to the other old line parties that, that it's just not good enough. It's not good enough to say you're going to bring in proportional representation and then pull that promise or to say that you're committed to climate change and then support fracking and LNG. So I hope that it can change the whole character of the debate we're having heading into the October election to talk honestly about the challenges we face and find ways to move forward in a more collaborative fashion, which is how Paul and I plan to work with other parties when we're together as soon as he's sworn in. Let, let me let you, uh, you, you talked about climate change. I want you to hear the Prime Minister on his way into a cabinet meeting this morning uh, when he was asked about the results in uh, Nanaimo Ladysmith. I want you to hear what he had to say and then uh, we'll come back and talk. One of the clear things that we've seen from uh, from this uh, this by-election, and I want to congratulate all the candidates who, who ran in it, is that Canadians are really preoccupied about climate change. Uh, I think as we see the rise of uh, successful Conservative politicians at the Premier level right across the country who don't believe in taking climate action, it's going to be really, really important that Canadians pick a government this fall that is committed to climate action, and that's certainly the point we're going to be making throughout the fall. All right, Mr. Manley, let me have you pick up on that. Justin Trudeau cites climate change as the key issue in the by-election results, but his candidate didn't win. Why do you think that is? Well, I think, you know, climate change was a, a real issue in this in this campaign. And, uh, you know, going to seniors' homes, you expect to hear a lot about um, pensions and, and pharmacare and things like that. But I talked to a lot of seniors where climate was top of mind for them, and it's because they're, you know, their grandchildren, they're worried about their grandchildren. 
well, why not the Liberals? Well, the Liberals just bought a pipeline. You know, they're, they, they've approved um, the LNG Canada project as well, which is, you know, five foreign multinationals that are going to be, you know, pumping fracked gas out of this country for decades to come. And when you have politicians who talk about, uh, you know, climate change on one hand, but then approve and, and promote these kind of fossil fuel infrastructure projects, it's it's uh it's not compatible you know when and and then you know seeing the environment minister going into canadian tire and telling us how we can change our light bulbs and our shower heads you know i changed my light bulbs decades ago i did my home, first home energy retrofit in in 2004 i turned a house built in 1910 into an energy star okay. and the idea that we're going to do home energy retrofits uh across the country and get them done by 2050 2050 which is the ndp plan that's not a bold plan. That's an old plan. I've done two home okay. energy okay. retrofits. So let's get on with it. Let's get the government leading on this. Yeah. Elizabeth May, what's, what's your reaction to what the Prime Minister had to say? It's about climate change, uh, he said, yeah. but the, the, the Liberals were a distant fourth uh, yeah. in this election. How come? Well, I think they were the, uh, exactly what Paul just said. Climate leaders don't buy pipelines. They've been trying to straddle cognitive dissonance, like we care about climate but we're going to keep propping up fossil fuels. They promised in their election platform they would get rid of fossil fuel subsidies. They've expanded them. Uh, but, and, there, and of course, Andrew Scheer, who has been a, uh, essentially uh, ignoring climate as a real issue, is uh, an, on the science unfit to govern. So I don't want to just target what the Liberals have said. But what, what, what I think the, what, what Justin Trudeau was trying to do there was say, you have to vote for a government. And what I'll say to Canadians in the next election in response is you have to vote for a parliament. We need a parliament that reflects what Canadians want, which means we have to avoid the perils of a false majority where, as Harper got in 2011 or Trudeau got in 2015, a minority of the voters happen to elect a majority of MPs from a party that then claims majority government and has all the power. We need a minority parliament with lots of Greens, and then we can get climate action. Mr. Manley, you referred to it uh, in, in uh, your first answer about uh, concerns around uh, vote splitting and, and who gets elected. I mean, you, you've won a by-election. You have to go back mm -hmm. at it again in the general election. And perhaps we'll see polls at the time, and we're, we're seeing some trending there now, that suggest there, there could be an opportunity for Conservatives to win. And if that happens again, there'll now be three parties, that, or at least three parties, looking at spri uh, splitting the progressive vote, the Greens, the Liberals, and the NDP. Do you think this will be a problem uh, again, possibly? And how do you fight it? Well, I think the, the, the Conservatives have been polling around 20, 24% here in this riding uh, for a while. And I'm not that concerned about it. I think now that I've gathered the kind of support that I have and I've uh, built this team and I've got this, you know, team of volunteers and, and support in the community, that I am just going to carry on with that. What, what I'll do is show this community that I will go to Parliament and I'll work hard. I'll work hard on these issues that are important to them. And uh, in the fall, I think that, that I'll get re-elected. Okay, Elizabeth May, let me, let me finish with you yeah. on that, this idea that uh, the, the, the Greens now, there's something going across, yes. happening across the country, it would seem. What yeah. do you think it is, and how do you maintain that into a general election and take away this, this thinking that people might have that, really like the Greens, but I'm a, a, making a strategic vote or I need to stop yeah. somebody else. Yeah, this is, of course, the, the horrors of first past the post, is it? gets people to vote not for what they want but against what they fear and fear factor voting has to go so what, we, what we'll be saying all the time is whether you're looking for ethics uh, hard work integrity and a clear commitment to real action we'll work really hard on issues that matter and we're honest with Canadians about what we can do and how we do it and we really need to do it together we need to work across party lines and we need to work across jurisdictions and we need to reach out to Canadians to say this is to respond to the climate emergency we need an all-hands-on-deck approach, which means that as government, we shouldn't think that government fixes everything. We have to invite mm. industry to help, invite volunteer groups to help, invite municipalities to do more, and give them the tools to do it. This could be a very exciting era of delivering positive change, <laughs> looking after workers, making sure no one is disadvantaged by the shift. But we have to go off fossil fuels. Right. And that's a message that needs to be heard. All right, Elizabeth May here in Ottawa, Paul Manley in Nanaimo. Congratulations again. We'll see you when you get to Ottawa. Elizabeth May, right. <laughs> thanks again. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.